Hi everyone, um, thank you very much for joining us. Um, I think we've got a few people in, we might have a few more joining us in the next couple of minutes. Um, I'm Claire from Colt Pens and I am delighted to welcome you to our Mont Blanc Calligraphy Workshop, which will be hosted by the fabulous Lizzie Matthews. Um, and she's going to introduce us all to the French calligraphy style called Ronde. Don't judge me on my pronunciation, please. Um, and also joining us today is Simon Weir from Mont Blanc. He is an all-round uh, Mont Blanc aficionado, so I hope you have questions about the brand um, ready. He is going to give you a very special sneak preview of the exquisite new range um, that's been inspired by the Jules Verne novel Around the World in 80 Days. Um, it, it really is beautiful. Um, the range is live on the Colt Pens website now, um, but we are officially launching it later this week um, on Thursday in our newsletter. And we will have an exclusive offer um, whereby if you, if you buy one of the writing instruments, you will get uh, one of the notebooks from the range um, as part of that, as a, as a gift with your purchase. Um, and Lizzie, I think, is using the notebook in question a bit later, so you'll get to see that. Um, so a bit more of that um, from Simon in a moment, but first, before we get started, I've got the exciting housekeeping stuff to, uh, to cover off. So uh, just a couple of points. We think the session's gonna last around an hour, kind of depends on how many questions you ask and keep them coming in um, and make sure you're comfy um, for that time frame. The session is being recorded and we will make the recording available um, probably over the next couple of days, hopefully tomorrow. So if you do miss something, or you just want to have a look, then you will get a chance to do that. Um, all cameras and sound are switched off for the duration of the session, apart from the panellists and presenters. So if you do have any questions, you'll see that there's a Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. Hopefully you can all see that. Um, so you can ask a question there. Um, Simon from Mont Blanc and Christine from Colt Pens and myself will be on hand to answer any of your questions where possible. And um, if we can, and we're not um, interrupting too much, we'll, uh, we'll ask Lizzie those along the way as well. Um, so we should also have some time for questions, a little bit of Q&A at the end of the session to uh, time allowing. So uh, without further ado, I'm gonna hand over to Simon from Mont Blanc. Hi Claire, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, fantastic to see so many people online with us this evening. Um, in a moment, I will hand over to Lizzie. I don't want to take up too much of your valuable calligraphy time. However, I am very fortunate that I actually have three of the pieces of the new collection around the world in 80 days. Um, I'm sure a lot of you out there will know that we have had a literary collection before, which was The Little Prince. So we're continuing this idea of having a collection based not around the writer, but actually around a particular story. So we've taken the idea of Around the World in 80 Days by Jules Verne. Um, if you have a look on one of my cameras, it should say Simon Weir close up. And hopefully you will be able to see in a little bit more detail, the first piece that I'd like to show you. Now, I'm sure a lot of you have either read the book or maybe you've seen the movie, but in case you haven't, I'll give you a little bit of a synopsis of the story. So based in the late 1800s, um, the journey really began in London and the main character, the main protagonist was Phileas Fogg. And he was a gentleman of means, meaning that he didn't really have to work. And he would spend his days in the Reform Club in London. Um, and he was a little bit of a gambler. He'd spend his days playing whist, uh, which was a little bit like cribbage. Um, and one day when he was reading the Daily Telegraph, an article had been written explaining how a new railroad had been opened up in the subcontinent of India. And the journalist believed that it was possible for someone to travel the world in 80 days using all these new forms of transport. So we've taken that idea. And for this particular series, we're actually only focusing on the first 18 days of the journey. So we begin with this stunning blue color. And we've actually, it's the first time that Mont Blanc's used this particular shade of blue. We've actually mixed two colors together we have Mediterranean sea blue, 
And we also have what we call London Purple. So the idea is here that we represent the Reform Club in London where he began, but then also the first part of the journey across the Mediterranean. If we look at the cap top in detail, we see the steamship Mongolia that has been laser engraved. And then we also, and I know on the camera you may not see it fully, but we have this wave design and our design team actually took this from drawings during the Victorian age. And then around the cap top, you'll see that we have the engraving for the 80 days. And on the cone of the writing instrument, if you can see very clearly, we have some rivets, which really represent that industrial revolution at that time. So here we'll have the Lagrange size in resin. We will also have it in the classic size. And then from the pure resin edition, we also have what we call our solitaire duet. So this is where we mix two different materials. And I'm really hoping that on the camera you get to see this fantastic translucent lacquer, which is really a degradé effect. And depending on how you capture it in the light, it really goes from this really dark, deep blue thinking of the sea, right the way through to this very light, almost purpley color. And then here you can see on the cap top, the waves much more clearly engraved. And if we look round on the clip, you'll see if I can just bring it into the right light for you, give me a second, you should hopefully see the Ace of Spades, because this was the highest card that you could have when you played whist. And as I say, Phileas Fogg was his gambling man, and he had around about £40,000 wealth, and he actually wagered £20,000 on this bet that he could travel the world in 80 days. And then on top of that, he used the other 20,000 pounds of his wealth to actually pay for the journey. So this is, as I say, what we call the solitaire duet, which comes in the classique sites. And then finally in the collection, we bring all of those different elements together. So you can see this beautiful dark blue lacquer. You see the striking Victorian wave design, both on the cap and on the barrel. And then you see this beautiful little plaque with the steamship engraved on it. And I was actually chatting to one of our design team and I said, well, where did you get the idea of the plaque? And she was looking through uh, pictures of some of these old gentlemen's clubs in London. And if you could imagine the bar area, you would have had the crystal decanters and around the top of each of the decanters, you would have had these little plaques telling you which drink was inside. So we've really kept all of the design elements from that period of time. Of course, within the collection, we will also have a limited edition ink. And there will be, as Claire said, the notebook to accompany this. And there will also be some other small accessories like cufflinks and a bracelet. Um, so really that, I think, is probably enough for me. I'd like to hand over now to Lizzie, who will now take us on a journey through uh, the Ron style of calligraphy. Um, as Claire mentioned, if you have any questions, please do use the chat function. Um, and I hope Lizzie won't mind, but if there's any questions that are kind of pertinent to the calligraphy, I will interrupt as, as we go. And as I say, we have got a little bit of time at the end for Q&A. So please enjoy the evening. Um, I hope you enjoyed that little sneak peek of the collection. Um, and without further ado, I'll hand you over to Lizzie. Thank you. Thank you, Simon, and uh, thank you, Colt Pens, for inviting me to um, host this evening. And thank you to everyone who's um, joined us. Um, I'm hoping we will have a sort of calming hour of um, calligraphy, putting pen to paper. You don't have to join in, but it would be really good if you can um, follow along with us. Um, so all you really need is some paper, lined or if you have um, a guide sheet that you can put underneath it just to help us write in a, a straight line and um, your favorite writing instrument it doesn't have to be um, a, a fountain pen it can be a, an automatic pencil or a roller ball um, whatever you would um, like to use um, i'm very lucky and i do have a set of the uh, around the world um, collection here so i'm going to have a little 
play with those as well and you'll be able to see them when I switch to the uh, document camera. Um, linking in with all of that, as, as um, Claire mentioned, we're going to look at the Rond style of um, calligraphy. Um, this was uh, a very popular style in 19th century France and it's, um, we're going to look at elements of it and see how we can incorporate it perhaps into our own handwriting, perhaps little elements that you might want to sneak into your handwriting. Um, and also at the end, we're going to look at doing a design of perhaps a card or a postcard using the elements that we've learned. So I'm going to switch to um, my overhead camera. Um, here we go. You can see the, the pens there as well. Um, and I just want to have, show you um, examples of this rond script. Is that back to front? Simon, no, that's, that's perfect. It's good. Perfect, perfect. Okay, great. For me, really, it's back to front, but that's, uh, that's okay. Um, uh, as you can see, the um, this is the wrong script. Um, it's a it first made its appearance in the 1600s, um, and it was a sort of modern evolution of the Gothic French handwriting of the 15th and 16th centuries. And it became one of the official French hands that the uh, French Parliament sort of endorsed, because in 1633 they decided that only three handwriting scripts would be allowed to be taught and used for official documents. And the Ronde was the formal one. It was never really meant to be um, used as uh, an everyday handwriting style. I'm just going to move those up slightly so you can see a bit more. Sorry, hold up still. Um, but it was used a lot for um, uh, legal documents and um, uh, official documents like birth certificates, often with a lot of flourishes like this, which were obviously quite difficult to, um, to forge. Um, and then it became very popular in the United States as well at the turn of the 20th century. And they sort of slightly adapted it and um, made it their own. They called it French roundhand. Um, and you can see this sort of classic style here. Um, it's very legible, but it has this very distinct characteristic curl to it. And um, there's, there was a lot of use of banners and things like that. And I really liked this sort of style. Um, you can see here, actually, this is a, a, an example of um, Jules Verne's actual handwriting himself. Obviously, this is written much faster, but you can see elements of the Ronde in his own, in the title here. Um, you can see this very, this lovely sort of looping D that we're going to look at. and these. Um, very round upright letters whereas English round hand was was written very much on a slant and everything was was oval this is all very much based on the circle and the the round shape so those are sort of examples of it and you still see its influence today I'm I remember having a, a French pen pal uh, and I was always massively impressed by her handwriting because it had these really elaborate curls um, and I think um, the French do, do, do still use um, elements of it um, and you'll probably recognise it. But we can take what we, the bits that we like and, and uh, use it in our own handwriting. Um, now, obviously, when it was first written, um, when it was first come across, and uh, it was written with a quill. Um, and you can see here, um, that we have, I've written, I've written it out using a calligraphy nib here. And you can see that you've got the sort of, you can see the differences here between the thick and the thin strokes. We're going to be looking at it in its monoline form. Um, if you have a calligraphy pen, you might want to try it at another time later on, once, we, once you've got to grips with the sort of skeleton forms of the letters. Um, but I thought I would just really quickly demonstrate I do have a quill here, so you can see, um, let's get a piece of paper. Um, just 
just how you've got those thin and thick lines using the traditional quill. And it, every single circle shape would be written in two strokes like that. So you'd get a, a beautiful circle like that. Sorry, the quill's always a bit squeaky. Some people love it, some people don't. But you can see there, that would have been how it would have been written originally with the, with the quill. But I appreciate that not everyone has a quill lying around or even a calligraphy nib. So we will stick to the monoline form, which I still think is, is really, really beautiful. Um, and then we can use it using a, a fountain pen and, and use it in our handwriting. So, let me just move that away. Before we start writing, I just want to make sure, just flip that to me quickly. I just want to make sure that you are sitting in a comfortable position. Um, you should have both feet on the floor. Um, don't cross your legs. Um, and have your, head, your chair tucked in quite well so that you're supported. And don't hunch, have your shoulders relaxed. Um, because it's really important, you know, calligraphy is quite a mindful activity a lot of the time. And, um, you know, I can be doing it for many hours at a time. So it's really important to be very comfortable so that you don't get tired or, or strain any muscles. So now that we're comfortable, um, we're going to just do a few warm up exercises just to get our arms used to that circular motion because we don't just use your hand, when you're, your fingers when you're writing. You want to use your, your wrist. And so it's really important that you sort of gaining muscle memory and we warm up our, our whole arm movement. Um, so if we just get some paper um, and I will flip to the other camera. Okay. So, this is, the, this is the really beautiful around the world notebook. Um, and it's got, it traces his journey throughout the book. Um, and I'm going to be using, I'm going to be using this one. Um, and I'm also using the around the world blue ink, which is this really lovely sort of oceanic sort of blue color. Um, it's really, really nice. I'm really, really pleased with that. So I'm going to use that. And for now, I just want you to, we're just going to do a few warm up exercises. And as I said, it's very much based on this circular motion. So if, I just want us to make sure you can see me, but I just want us to do some circles going along the page. Try and keep us, keep them within the same lines if you can. Try and keep them the same width so that each circle is the same distance apart. And that we're just getting And I'm going this time in a anti-clockwise position, um, direction, sorry. So now we're going to go the other way. Start at the bottom and we're going to move in a clockwise position. And try not to just use your fingers, try and use your whole arm, your, or at least your, your, your wrist as well. Don't just use your fingers. Um, you don't have to be using it, doing it quite as large as I am. I'm just doing it this size so that everyone can see basically. So that we've done that quite slow and um, considered, but now I want us to just do it really quite fast. We're obviously not gonna have the same accuracy in the size, but just, 
to get used to using and your your whole arm will will move so we're going to just go you know look a bit of a mess to be honest but just work your way along and it's getting your shoulders and your arm used to that motion now we're going to go the other way Okay. And then there are some really lovely loops in this um, script. So we're going to go up and the central line will always be vertical. Let's just make sure you can see. And then we're going to loop and then come up and loop. we can we're trying to keep them all sort of as parallel as possible and as equal in distance from each other okay some other of the basic strokes just like an n shape Curling over again, trying to keep it as consistent as possible. And then some U shapes. Okay, so we've got used to the sort of basic strokes that we might be using, some of them anyway. And we're going to look at the um, uh, lower case alphabet. Let me just. I have put, I've put together this exemplar, which you will actually be um, sent um, probably tomorrow, um, so that you too can look at the letters and. Um, practice doing them you can you can even trace them it's a really good way of getting to know the skeleton letter forms and then if you do if you are into calligraphy and you want to you do have a broad edge pen then do feel free to then try it um, using the broad edge pen um, but as i say for tonight we're just going to stick to these um, monoline forms and we will start with the uh, lower case so um, I'm going to go through it relatively quickly because it's not a million miles from what we already know the lowercase alphabet to be. Um, and so it's just helpful, I think, to see somebody write it. So if you want to follow along with me, that would be great. Um, and, but I am going to go through it quite quickly, the lowercase, because it's the uppercase letters that are just a bit more interesting and where we can have a little bit more fun. So. The things you have to remember, the circular form comes into nearly every letter and the um, angle is, is upright. So we're not slanting our letters at all. Um, so just try and keep everything upright. So the A, you don't have to do them as large as I'm doing, but again, it's just for visibility's sake. And then we will probably try and join the letters because then you'll you'll see how we how we join them um, if you're doing a b you come up and then you have to come up to do that loop you have to come up at a slight angle here so that when you come back down that central stroke there is vertical so you come off at a slight sort of i don't know uh 70 degree angle maybe um and then down and then round like that for the B. C straight into the D. Now the D you can do a normal straight D, but it's it was quite common, and that was something that we saw in Jules Verne's own handwriting to do this lovely 
loop across, which I really like. E. And then that goes up and straight into the F. Again, doing what we did with the B, that slight kink off to the right, um, down, and then it has a nice loop at the end. If you want, you can do a crossbar. I rather like it just like that. I think it looks rather elegant. Um, and as long as you think it doesn't get confused for an S, which I don't think it does, um, I think that's a really open, elegant letter. The G. The descenders aren't very long. Um, they're not really long descenders and the ascenders, um, you know, they're sort of ever so slightly, if this is the X height, this bit here of the letter, the ascender is ever so slightly taller and the descender ever so slightly longer here, but they're not really extravagant. Uh, this would go straight into the H. which we can go straight into the I, straight into the J. And we'll stop there, that line. Okay, now we're gonna go into the K. So up and then that kink off to the right, down, loop, just like a normal K. And what we're trying to achieve to get balance in your writing, you're ideally, the space of the ascender here will match as close as possible to the, um, the space in the descender there. We're trying to get all those loops the same size and that just gives your writing a lovely balanced look. The L. These aren't a million miles away from what we already know. So I'm going to go through them M, N, O. Just keep this, you know, this the spacing as, as consistent as possible, the width of the letters. P, you can do it just straight, but I like to do a little curl. Q, so many circles, just building up our letters. And I just like to have a very simple Q like that. The R is slightly, this is the sort of, it's in a, in, in a copper plate style, we'd go above the X height line here and then down down but this one doesn't go very high so it stays very flat here and then loops round to make and then we're going to go straight into the S. And the S has quite a sort of angled thing so that we can do a just a loop like that. Now some people join it up to the T like that. Some people just do a, a little line just from there. I quite like this loop. And then we've got U. V. W. And then the X comes round like that, round like that, straight into the Y. and Z. Okay, so there we have the lowercase alphabet. I appreciate I've gone through that quite quickly. I hope you've managed to keep up. Um, I think it just helps to see someone, someone write it. And then to link the letters, again, it's all fairly self-explanatory. Um, they should be very similar to what we already know. Okay, around, the 
you can see there it's getting the spacing equal and balanced around. I won't write about the white world. I'm going to go straight on to the uppercase letters um, because those are a little bit more interesting. And um, with the uppercase, I'm not going to go through them A to Z um, because they fall into quite useful groups um, where the letters are very in that each group are built on the same sort of structure and they are quite similar. So the first group we're going to look at is all based on this, this one shape, this one here. So we're going to imagine this is our baseline. That would be our X height. And so our capitals are going to be sort of twice as high like that. And we're going to come down and we're going to go into a lovely curl that goes round and up. So all of them have got this shape in it, in this group. And this is going to be an eye. And to create an eye, we just give it this little introduction loop there. Now to do a T, again, we're doing that same shape round and up but the, this section here this stroke is going to be much longer so it's going to go all the way across and up like that and there you've got your t okay we're going to do another t because that turns nicely into And just by adding the crossbar. Then we can go into a K, all with the same introductory stroke with that lovely swirl at the end. The K has got the same stroke as the I there. And then you just come down and up. I mean, some people would put another curl there. I think to have two curls looks wrong. You don't, you don't want to overbalance, you don't want to over elaborate your letters. I think often the, it's nice if there's just a curl on, on one side. There's the K. And from there, we can quite easily do an H. Again, the same. I, but we're going to have a slightly smaller swell here. Again, not to sort of overbalance that one. And that creates your H. And I'm doing it in the same, obviously if you're doing it in a broad edge pen, you will need to break up the strokes a little bit. Um, if you're doing it with a quill, you can probably do that um, spiral all in one stroke because the quill is a lot more um, pliable and you can, you can get away with it. With a metal um, nib, you might have to do the, separate the strokes. So for example, you'd go down and like that, and then perhaps you'd have to take your pen off and then do this bit like that, and then do the last bit. You'd have to break it up. Um, so that it, it, it's, it's really beautiful when you see it with um, a quill. Let me quickly do it actually, just this, this one shape. I can probably, as I said, oh, catching. A few little splatters, but it sort of adds to the, uh, adds to the effect. That's all in one stroke, um, or we can break it up. I think. There. Ink is not going. Like that. 
So there you go, you can see the difference between the thin and the thick strokes. So we've got up to H, we've got a couple more in this group. Um, we've got the R, doing that swirl again. And this time, we've got a small swirl here that just comes all the way around to there and up to create your R. And the P. I really like the P, it sort of comes down from that top round and like that. That's one that I like to use in my own writing sometimes. And now I've gone to the J, which I know that many people think that the I looks like a J, but in many calligraphic scripts, not all, but most calligraphic scripts, the way to distinguish between the I and the J is that the J will fall below that baseline. So for this, in this script, it comes all the way down and then it comes all the way up into a lovely curl like that. And then you add that same stroke on the top. So it's quite an elaborate J, I quite like it. Um, but yes, um, it's like in, in copper plate, for example, um, English round hems, that would be your I. But the J, and it does look a bit like a J, but the J would look, would go beneath that hand, that uh, baseline. And that would be your J. So that's how you can make sure you don't get them confused. So that's that first group, which are all based on that spiral um, shape. The second group, spirals again but it's it's they're all they've all got this shape in them they've got a sort of backward backward six i suppose you'd call it um and we you can just practice that shape backwards six the sort of curl that goes round and up and from that we can add things that create the letters so this one for example is going to be the b And then we can also create the same shape, the N. And obviously from the N, it's very easy to go into the M. I know I'm going through, going through these quickly again. I hope you're managing to keep up. As you say, there's a recording, so you can always go back and you'll have the handout as well. Um, but yeah, if, if, you, if you just want to sit and watch me write them, then that's also really helpful. Um, the slight anomaly in this group is the A, because it's got the same shape, but it's more slightly, the first one is slightly written on a slant. So we're going to do that same sort of backward six, but it's on a slant more. And from there, we can go like that and create the A. You can go a bit more elaborate with the top one if you want. You can sort of play around. I wouldn't do an elaborate curl there and an elaborate curl there, because I think it looks a bit much. But you can sort of play around. I'm not massively fond of the A, there is, a, 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 I mean, with all these letters, there are variations, but I see what you think of this one. This is, a, this is an alternative A that's sort of based on a, a large lowercase A. I'm not sure whether I like it or not. I, I think that it could be confusing and in some ways you could almost think, see that as, a, as an X. I, I don't know. It's, but there's an option for you if you like it. So that's that group. Now I'm going to carry on on this page, but we're going to look at the next group, which are all based on circular um, shapes. And the classic easy one, which I just, is the C. Can't really go wrong, just a lovely spiral. And from the C, do another C, all the way up 
and down and you've got your G. And again, that loop will try and be the same size as the descenders in your lowercase letters. With the O, it's not just a circle. It's sort of got, it's a circle. So you start at the top, come round, and then it's sort of got like a, almost like a little Superman Clark Kent curl in the middle. Um, and then the Q, exactly the same. Little curl, and then you can do that. Well, there is an alternative Q as well, which looks a bit like a two. A large two. It's quite nice, I can't, it's quite elegant. And then finally, we've got, it doesn't really fit in this group, but it's an E. But it's that lovely, got that lovely barrel ball at the end with the spiral. So that's that group. Now on the penultimate group here, these ones all start with a spiral. Um, so, we're gonna start with a spiral, not a massive one, but something like that. And then it goes straight into a vertical line down. And then we're gonna go up. And then you've got your U. So all of these ones are gonna start with that spiral at the beginning. If we do another U, And then you can go straight down, same descender loop to make your Y. And then you've got B that goes up and then loops. I really like that loop at the end of a V. I sometimes use that. Um, I think that looks really elegant. And you can also, from there, obviously go on. To create. W. And then finally, the last one in this group that starts with a spiral is the X. You start with a spiral and you come back on yourself. So this is like a nine, I suppose. It's sort of the opposite of the um, of the six shape, to the upside down. But it was nine, and then this one, not a spiral there, but you do do a spiral there. You don't want to have spirals on all of them, that would look ridiculous. And you don't want to do them just on the top, but just by having them on those diagonal um, strokes, it balances it and makes it look quite, quite elegant. And then there's one group in which we've sort of got letters that don't really fit into any of the other groups. So they're just sort of odd, odd cousins, really. Um, I'm just going to make sure you can see my full page, sorry. Okay. This one, we've got the S, which doesn't have a massive loop at the top but has the sort of nice spiral at the bottom. You don't want to do it on the base. And then the Z. And if that's at the end, you can go quite, you can go be quite elaborate really. Do a sort of, all of these you can be as, ostentatious as you want, really. And the L, which is quite simple. You could do a more, more of a loop for your L. And then up, or you could have the spiral there. You can change them around. And then the last letter is slightly tricky, it's the D. And Ds are always tricky in, in these kinds of scripts. But you start at the top and you come down and then you go back on yourself and do a little loop. Then come back and you've got that sort of bowl circle shape that comes all the way around. Sorry, my off screen. And there, and I'm going to move 
can do another another few Ds because they are, I think, the hardest letter to get right. So we'll try another one. Come down and then back on yourself. Do a little loop. And then it's got quite a nice round bowl and then comes into the spiral there. I'm going to do it one more time. There we go. And it's quite, in this script, it's quite, um, quite large, this bowl. If you were doing a copper plate English round hand D, it's much, much narrower. And again, you can see it's all, all of these shapes in English copper um, round hand are based on the oval, but very much here in the French round hand, you've got to switch that oval to circle. Okay. So we've done our uppercase letters. Um, I think it's much easier to go through them in those groups. Um, and so for the last little bit, I just want to have a go at putting what we've learned together and creating a little design of a card, um, which could be anything. It could be, um, you could write, you know, wishing you a very happy Father's Day or, you know, Merry Christmas or happy birthday. Um, so I've just, I've just written, I've just drawn two lines here um, and I'm going to write, I'm going to stick to my Jules Verne theme and I'm going to write around the world in 80 days. And then we're going to perhaps see how we can add a few motifs that were quite common in those in the 19th century and, and, and with that um, style of writing to make it a little bit more jazzy for, the, for our design. So I'm just going to write and you can write, you can follow along with me. I'm going to be slightly elaborate. Or you can write whatever you want. Hope that you can see. Round and over on the D. Round. I do love the colour of this ink. I don't know if it shows up particularly well on the camera, but it's just this really marine-like colour that goes so well with the, the theme. Okay, so as you can see, I'm writing world here. Now, normally, if I was to do another D like that, that's going to crash into there and get really messy. So I'm just going to do a normal um, vertical D there, um, stem. But to balance out the curl here, I'm going to turn it into a curl there. And we see the balance around the world and here. In. Probably done that loop a bit too big. Eighty. Now I'm going to leave that Y like that for a minute. I'm going to come back to that, um, and you'll see why in a minute. And then we've got our D. If you're doing any kind of design like this, it's always nice to use the descenders as ways in which we can um, put a flourish. Um, I'm just gonna have a piece of paper here. Where's my hand just hit? <laughs> um, and especially if you've got one in the, in the, in the uh, middle. So we're just gonna do, I'm gonna end in a spiral just to, again, get that motif coming through. 
So I've got my text and then, but I also want to add a little bit. And I don't know if you remember at the beginning when I showed you this with the, the sort of banner style. So I thought it would be really good to create and uh, show you how to do a really simple banner motif that we can put on top and um, add a bit of style to our, to our card. So it's a very simple way to do it. I'm going to start here and I'm just going to do a little banner in this sort of top left corner. And I'm going to do a wavy line like that. So it goes from down, up, and then up. And then I'm going to do a parallel line underneath that follows that line above. And you can do a slightly concave little curl there, curve. And the matching one there. So we sort of that's where we're going to put our text. Now here you can see it's asking to sort of come up into a curl. So I'm going to curl it around, I'm going to come back and then out. Come in and then out. And then we're going to add another line here, which is the same thickness as our original banner bit here. And then we can just do two sort of forks. And that's going to be the end of our banner. And if we just do a little line there, you can see there it's, that's one end. It's a really simple way of just doing a nice design. Um, and we're going to do exactly the same on the bottom. I've got a funny feeling I'm going to crash into my writing, but that doesn't matter. So we're going to go round and then in on ourselves. And then out. We're going to do that little parallel line above, little fork, and that line there. And there's your banner. And we can put a little bit of detail on it. I sometimes just put a little along the edges of the main banner. Irregular little marks, that's sort of almost like stitching along the top and the bottom, like that. And these two bits here would be folded over. So we quickly just we can do some sort of shading. And I just sort of go thin, and then this is very quick. And then this side. Slowly get them sort of like that. So you get a bit of shading. And I'm just going to quickly put Mr. Jordan. That. And then I'm going to manage to smudge it, but yes, hopefully you'll <laughs> just in the last couple of minutes. I, you could use a ruler for this bit, but I quite like the sort of hand, hand drawn effect. It's a little bit imperfect. I'll just go around and do a hand drawn border and then you can, you can really add whatever you like. I'm going to add the suits of the playing cards in each one, the reference to his card game in which he wagered his his money to go around the world uh, and a spade but you could obviously you could do anything and you can just keep going you know just just add a little motifs look at french 19th century french documents see the kind of things that they had 
put on, you know, and you could be as elaborate as you like. But there we go, a little postcard that you could send off. And if you are sending a letter or anything, don't forget the, the um, envelope as well. You could do something in the same style with just the name. And I just think it's a really pretty um, uh, script to learn. Um, and I hope you have sort of taken on, you know, we've, we've, we've gone through, I know we've gone through quite quickly, the, the basic letter forms. Um, but do practice it and uh, really get to know those letter forms. And, um, you know, if you want to try it with a, a broad edge um, pen as well, um, do go for it because it's, um, it's a really beautiful script. Um, and I hope, you've, I hope you've enjoyed it. I will flip that so you can actually see me now. Um, yes, I hope, I hope you've enjoyed the evening. Um, I hope I haven't gone too fast, but um, thank you very much for joining me. And uh, if there are any questions, please just I, shout. It's funny you should say that, Lizzie. We do <laughs> actually have a question. And it was funny that you talked about a broad, a broad edged nib. Yes. Um, one of our participants was saying that she is a calligrapher. Mm -hmm. She's used to using dipping pens. Now, yeah. I know that you've used pretty much all of our nibs with your various kind of workshops that you've done with us. How would you say she likes to write in italic? Now, yes. I know that obviously we have a double broad nib, but she was a little bit concerned about whether the edges are too rounded to, to write kind of proper italic. Obviously, we have the option of bespoke nibs as well. But what's your take it's, with the kind um, of the double board? Does it work for you or not? It, it, it really, it, it, it's a lovely pen. Um, I think if you want the really, really crispness, um, it's very difficult to get that crispness with a, with a, with a fountain pen um, that you can't obviously sharpen. You know, I, I, have, I have metal nibs that I can, you probably won't be able to see this. Where's my camera? There. Um, I have metal nibs that I can just sharpen and get that really, really crisp line. Yeah, you want that really sharp line yeah. to it. Like real, um, yeah. Obviously you can't, I mean, and then, you know, if once it's gone, I can just throw it away. It costs me a pound or something. Um, obviously with a, with a beautiful Mont Blanc fountain pen, you don't want to start uh, <laughs> sharpening. Not something we advise, I have to be no, honest. No, no. We don't advise any um, kind of, uh, you know, home DIY to, uh, to yes. sharpen the nib. They, um, are, they are beautiful pens. Um, uh, and the, 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 the crispness of, if you want it really sharp, it, it's going to have to be, a, a, I don't know, a dip pen for that, but I think you can still get beautiful italic with it. Um, uh, just it, it's a different it's a different style of writing really okay i mean i think i know from our side um we now do offer a, be, a bespoke nib service so okay. that's something where we're able to sort of measure the way that you write and we have a lot of kind of um data that we're able to collect from the writing test and then a nib could be made specifically for you mm -hmm. but as i say i think for you um i know we mentioned in the chat already sue but i think generally just have a chat with the guys at cold if it's something that you'd like to do and kind of have the writing test then they'll get in touch with us and we can arrange it um mm -hmm. but as, as you said lizzie you can do a little bit of italic with a double oh, board, yeah, absolutely like, you can. Mm. no it's it's you can absolutely write italic pen and, and it, it is really beautiful um it's it depends on on the the style that you particularly like um yeah Okay now, okay, now this is interesting. Now, now we're getting the, um, I've got another calligrapher. Uh, I normally write copper plate with a flexible steel nib. Would this work for this script? Not really. Could you do this with the flex or not really? I mean, it's, it's meant to be written with the border. You, do you know, you could try it, but the, 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 obviously with a flexible nib, you're, you're putting the pressure on the down strokes. And so that's where you get the thickness. Um, the, the, the thick strokes on this um, uh, script are slightly different. So it's, it's meant to be written with a broad edge with um, nib. You could try it. I mean, I have, you, you'd get, you just, the, the thicknesses would be slightly different, but you could certainly try. I think it would still look really beautiful. So yeah, try okay. it. 
Okay. Okay. So this is more of a little bit of a question for me. Uh, the Mont Blanc calligraphy nib be available on additional models in the future, specifically the Legrand. Um, yes. If we talk about our flex nib that we launched a couple of years ago, initially it was put on the 149 um, in precious resin. And then we also did a, a special edition in the gold leaf. This year we will be doing a resin version in Legrand. And we will also have a Legrand Solitaire edition in the most fabulous degradé, uh, sort of a Bordeaux Burgundy, right the way through to sort of almost like a bright red in the centre. Um, off the top of my head, I believe that's going to be coming out sort of towards the second half of the year, probably around about September, October time. Um, but yes, you will be able to get the resin Legrand with... Um, the flex nib okay the flex nib oh, is, we is have wonderful. a question in the q a i know you're a big fan of that yes um ah suggestions for practice papers which don't bleed um, well i've been using i've been using the montblanc notebooks um uh which are really really nice particularly when you pair them with the montblanc inks um you know they've all been um uh you know tested obviously uh, to work very well with those. I've got a notebook, another notebook here that's got just little dots on it, um, which is a plain one. But yes, these, I think these are really nice papers to, to practice on. Um, uh, other papers, Rhodia does quite a good one um, uh, that is very smooth. That's pretty, that's good for um, flexible nibs. Um, uh, you want something with a little bit more tooth to it um, to write with a broad edged pen. Um, so uh, Fabriano is quite nice paper as well. But for, um, I, I do like doing practices in the notebooks because then you've, you've got them all. It's nice to go through them and see them all at the end, see how we well you've improved. Okay, and I know you've, you've said to me before that you do literally sit there and write pages and pages of the same letter, don't you? Yes, just to yes. get that practice. Yeah, it is. It's all about it's all about practice. Um, you know, I've got pages and pages of O's, and none of them are the same. Um, so it's it's not rocket science. It's just a case of doing it again and again and again. And it's it's amazing how your arm and your 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 hand builds up that muscle memory and really getting to know the letter forms well. That's you know these skeleton letter forms before you start. Um, trying to write them with a with a calligraphy nib perhaps okay i've got two final questions for you mm -hmm. uh one is have you ever tried it with a pointed nib but i think we in a sense kind of answered that before you said we you did could try it if you'd like but we did you know, sort of cover that and it i think it i mean absolutely would be possible it's going to look slightly different because the the swells are going to be in different places to where they should be um if it's written with a broad edged um, pen, which has got more of the swell on the on the bottom, sort of the bottom left curl of the of the circle. If you do it in a pointed pen, it's going to be very much on the down strokes on the side. So it might change it a little bit, but um, it's it's still definitely doable and I think would look very pretty. Okay, and then a final question, which is I think is a great question. Um, is it the same pen angle for both upper and lower case lettering? Yes, I mean, in terms of, I mean, obviously they're all up, upright, the letters are upright. Um, if you're writing with a broad edged nib, if you're going to do it with a broad edged nib, it's quite a shallow pen angle. I think it's something like um, 15 degrees or something like that. Um, I had to check actually. Um, but you don't want it to be, it, it's, it's, it's quite a shallow pen angle and you keep that pen angle obviously throughout and that's how you'll get the, the different um, uh, swells and uh, thick strokes. But yes, it would be the same. And that, that's how they would marry together. You would always use the same pen angle for uh, the uppercase and lowercase. Brilliant. And again, it comes back to practice, practice, practice. Absolutely. Um, brilliant. Look, Lizzie, thank you so much for this evening. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. We've had some really, really nice comments from the participants this evening. Everybody said how wonderful it was, how much they enjoyed it. 
Um, I would say from my side, thank you very much. Claire, I believe, is just going to pop back online. Um, just Hello. To sort of, oh, there we are. <laughs> Hi. A bit, and actually, I have to, be, before I um, do a bit of our admin at the end, I had a question for Lizzie as well. If she's still ah, okay. Um, so, doing my practice, I'm having a bit of trouble with slanting and getting okay. getting straight. Any any tips for me? So, just to get straight aligned. So, when you have, if you have a guideline, a guide sheet underneath, mm. um, have some vertical lines written, uh, drawn. Um, there is. I, there is on the handout that we are handing out tomorrow, there are, um, there's a, as well as the exemplar, there are some guidelines, but they've actually got a quite a strong angle on them. So ignore that angle. You just want to have vertical lines down and that okay. should keep you, um, that will help. Should keep you in a straight line down <laughs> as well me, as, yeah. Yeah, perfect. That will keep me in check. Yes. Sure. <laughs> thank you both. Um, that was absolutely fantastic. Um, thank you so much. My um, yeah, my efforts were a bit lanty, but I found it incredibly relaxing. Mm. There's just something about the round, circular shape that's really satisfying. I just, it, it, yeah, it, I just really enjoyed that. So thank, thank you very much. And I, for one, will forever be doing my O's with a thinking of Superman and uh, Clark Kent now with a little curl on them. So that's, that's a really great tip and a really nice way to remember it. Um, so thank you both very much. Um, just, just a bit of farewell for anyone that's still here. Um, as we mentioned, we have recorded the session, so we will be sharing that in the next couple of days, hopefully tomorrow, if we can get it done in time. So that will be going out across our social channels. We'll share that with all of you. As um, Lizzie's already mentioned, there's a PDF attachment of the exemplar with some lines and guides to help as well. Um, so that will hopefully come through tomorrow, um, so, so you'll have that um, practice with. So thank you um, for joining us. We hope you enjoyed the session. Um, please follow us on social media, um, your channel of choice, um, to find out more about our upcoming events and um, workshops. We will be hanging on for a little bit more if anyone has any other questions, so we'll make sure we've answered everything before um, we leave. But for now, thank you very much, Lizzie and Simon, for joining us and for sharing your knowledge. And um, to all of you for joining us, and we hope to see you again soon. Thank you very much. Have a lovely evening. Bye. Thank you.